In this example problem, we're going to calculate the nominal flexural strength of the blow section with high strength stainless steel strands um, using strain compatibility. Uh, you can see it's a T section with a uh, top width of 24 inches and six half inch diameter high strength stainless steel strands. Um, these strands have a specified area of 1.44 square inches per strand. Um, this is a, you know, you can see it's different than our conventional pre stress. Um, or conventional steel pre-stressing strands, but uh, this is specified from the manufacturer. You can also notice the stress strain curve for our high strength stainless steel strands is different than our conventional steel strands. Um, we have a lower stiffness than our conventional steel strands, so 24,500 rather than 28,500. And you can also see we have much less ductility um, with our stainless steel strands um, failing at between 0 0.014 and 0 0.02 strain. Um, you can see with our conventional steel strands, they won't rupture until about 0 0.04 or above. You can see some of the values that we'll need. Um, we need our jacking stress, which will be given. I will assume that we have a jacking stress of 70% of our ultimate strength, so 175 KSI, um, which is less than our given yield stress for the strands, so uh, we're okay there. And uh, we'll assume our losses, uh, so 0 0.05 times our jacking stress for our elastic shortening loss and 0.18 times our jacking stress for our total loss. Um, we can calculate our concrete stiffness, uh, you know, just using our conventional method um, to find our stiffness of 4,415. And then our strand eccentricity is the distance between D, uh, so D being the top or the distance from the, our extreme compression fiber to the centroid of all of our pre-stressing strands uh, minus yt. So we'll get a strand eccentricity of 9.8 inches. Our first step is to calculate our effective pre-stress, our effective strain, and our decompression strain. Um, so our effective pre-stress is just our jacking stress, 175 ksi minus our total pre-stress losses, 31.5 KSI, uh, which will give us a effective pre-stress of 143.5 KSI. Our effective strain then is just the stress 143.5 divided by the modulus, which is 24,500 for our high strength stainless steel strands, uh, which will give us an effective strain of 0 0.00586. Um, our effective free stress force is just our stress, uh, 143.5 times our pre stressing area, 0 0.864. Square inches, which will give us a force here of 124.0 uh, kips. Uh, next, we can find our decompression strain. So, our decompression strain is this force 124 divided by our area 360 times our modulus 4,415. Plus our uh, uh, effective pre stress force 124 times our eccentricity squared, so 9.8 squared, divided by our gross moment of inertia, 18,706 inches to the fourth, times strand eccentricity 4,400 or sorry, uh, times our, our concrete modulus 4,415 KSI. So this will give us a decompression strain of 2.22 times 10 to the negative fourth. Our next step is to iterate to solve for our pre-stressing strain at ultimate. Um, so we need to iterate for both of our pre-stressing, the strain and stress in our pre-stressing and also the strain in our top fiber. Um, so with these strand, uh, high strength stainless steel strands, because they um, have less ductility than traditional strands, 
Uh, we need to either assume that our high strength stainless steel strands rupture and the rupture of these strands controls failure or that our, our concrete crushes first and the crushing of the concrete controls failure. Um, so, you know, you need to assume one fails first, go through and check and then, um, you know, correct this assumption if needed. Uh, so we can see here that um, we're going to assume that our failure is controlled by the rupturing of our strands. Um, so we're going to guess initially that our strand stress is the rupture strength, so, or the ultimate strength, so 250 KSI. And the strain at ultimate in the strand is the um, ultimate, yeah, the ultimate strain given by the manufacturer. So uh, here for this strand, we're assuming 0 0.0114. Uh, next, we need to do an initial guess for our top fiber strain. Um, so again, we're assuming that uh, our strands are rupturing before our concrete's crushing, so this strain needs to be less than 0 0.003. Um, so I used a, a solver to get us a, a good first guess, um, but we're going to assume that the strain in our top fiber uh, is equal to 0 0.00145 at time of failure. Our next step is to calculate our required rectangular stress block coefficients. Um, because we're assuming a top fiber strain less than 0 0.003, um, we need to use the, the equations shown to find our beta 1 and our alpha 1 to give us our uh, shape of our rectangular stress block. Um, so first, we'll have, uh, we need to find our strain at ultimate stress in our concrete using the given equation. So we have 1.6, uh, sorry, plus, Our F prime C, which is 6 KSI, divided by 11, times 10 to the negative third, uh, which will equal 0 0.00215. We'll use this uh, strain at ultimate then um, with our concrete strength and our assumed uh, strain in our top fiber to find our, our uh, beta one value, our rectangular stress block, uh, first rectangular stress block coefficient. Um, so for us, our beta one, is gonna be equal to four minus 0 0.00145 divided by 0 0.00215. So again, the 0.00145 is the um, the top fiber stress that we assumed in uh, in the last step. So we're going to go through assume with that assumption and then you know go back and correct it if we need to. All right. So then over six minus two times uh, this ratio. Point zero zero two one five. So all this times one point one minus six ksi divided by fifty. Uh, so this will give us a value of 0 0.701, um, which we can see is greater than 0.65. So we're going to use 0 0.701 as our uh, beta 1 value. Next, we need to find our alpha 1. So alpha 1 is going to be equal to 1 divided by this beta 1 that we just found times 0.00145, our assumed top fiber strain, divided by um, our strain at ultimate stress, 0 0.00215, minus one third times this ratio squared, and then all this times one minus six KSI divided by 60, uh, which will give us a value of uh, 0 0.672. So this is our alpha one and our uh, beta one. Um, so just note here that uh, these equations, uh, alpha one and beta one, uh, were derived for CFRP strands. Um, I'm, you know, there's still ongoing research in this area. So uh, I'm using these values because uh, it's uh, CFRP strands and, uh, and high strength stainless steel strands uh, behave similarly. Um, but again, after the research on high strength stainless steel is completed, um, these equations may change.
Next, we need to use equilibrium to uh, find the depth of our compression block and our neutral axis depth. Um, so you can see here our equilibrium, tension equal to compression. Our tension is just our pre-stressing component. And in compression, we only have the uh, uh, concrete component. So our B, the width of our, um, uh, yeah, our top flange, and times A times the stress, the constant stress that's applied over that area. All right, so solving for A, we can find our compression block depth. So we have a total area of pre-stressing of 0.864 square inches. Uh, we have a stress in our pre-stressing. Again, we're assuming that our strands rupture at failure, so we have a stress of 250 KSI. Uh, divided by our alpha 1, which we found to be 0.672. We have 6 KSI concrete, and our top flange width is 24 inches. So this will give us an A of 2.23 uh, inches. Um, we can see that this is less than the total height of our top flange, so we know that our compression block is still in that top flange and will have a constant width of 24 inches. So we can then find our neutral axis depth just by taking this 2.23 divided by our beta 1, which we found to be 0 0.701. So we'll get a C to be 3.18 inches. So then this will be the uh, C and the A that we'll use uh, moving forward in this problem. Next, we need to check that our initial um, guess for our strain in our top fiber uh, equals the strain that we can calculate. So we need to calculate the, uh, the strain in our, our top fiber. Um, so we can do this by looking at our strain diagram um, and kind of rearranging things and solving for our strain um, at, in the top fiber. And we can find then our strain in the top fiber is going to be equal to our strain in the pre-stressing, um, I guess, at, at rupture, so 0 0.014, uh, minus our effective pre-stress, 0 0.00586, uh, minus our decompression strain, 2.22 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then times our C, 3.18, divided by D, 20 inches, minus 3.18. And this will give us a strain here of 0 0.00145. Um, so we can see that this strain that we calculated is equal to the initial strain that we assumed. So our initial guess was OK. Um, if this strain doesn't equal the initial strain that you assumed in the top fiber, then you would need to iterate until they are equal. So because they're equal, we can kind of move to step three and we can calculate our nominal moment capacity. So to find our nominal moment capacity, we're going to sum our moments about the centroid of our compression block. Um, so we have our force, which is our tension steel component. So APS, FPS. So point, our total area pre-stressing, 0.864 times FPS, 250 KSI, our strands are rupturing first, and then times our lever arm. So 20 inches minus A over 2, so 2.23 inches divided by 2. And this will give us a moment of 4,400 and 14 kip inches. So um, the resistance factor for high strength stainless steel still has not been established. Um, so we're going to assume a fee similar to uh, CFRP strands, carbon fiber reinforced polymer strands. Um, so we're going to assume a, a fee of 0.75. So the, the two materials are both non-ductile are both less ductile than um, conventional pre-stressing strands, and um, failure in both can be controlled by rupture of the strands. Um, so I, I'm going to assume that the fees are the same. 
But so then our, our phi mn is just going to be 0.75 times 4,414 kip inches, uh, which will give us a phi mn equal to 3,973 kip inches. So this is our factored nominal moment uh, for our section with high strength stainless steel strands.